go, fellas. And you're on. A rivalry that runs deep with a pair of teams and schools separated by just 17 miles. And tonight you get it on Nine Star TV from Shenandoah High School. Along with Jim Leisure, I'm Brendan King. As the Shenandoah Raiders get set to host the Eastern Hancock Royals. Jim, always a fun one in a rivalry game. A couple of teams kind of heading in different directions right now. Starting with Eastern Hancock. Over their last six, they've exchanged wins and losses in each of those two game segments, but still a very good record of 10 and 5, 4 and 1 in the Mid-Eastern Conference, and it's a family affair for the Royals, of course. Yeah, head coach uh, Aaron Spaulding, you see his two sons there, twins Jacob and Silas. You see they're scoring 31 and a half a game between the two of them, and you see coach in the middle there. This is the, the year, honestly, that Eastern Hancock has been building to for the last few years. They got a senior dominated ball club. Uh, Edric Miller is also a senior, as is Grant Gray. He will play a lot. So, again, you're going to see a lot of seniors as you see the Royals being introduced there. Jim, for Shenandoah, the home squad, good environment tonight here at Shenandoah High School. The lights just went out there about to introduce their starting lineups. They just broke a three-game skid, got an important win last time out against Westell, hammered them 81-50. Inconsistent year so far for Rick Ellsworth and crew, but... You know, they are an organization and a team that is familiar with playing with young guys a whole lot. Well, and you look on the graphic there, the Raider youth, you see Hellman, Mitchell, and Howard. And now Howard will not play tonight. Apparently got a little bit of a banged-up injury, so he will probably not go. But they also have another freshman, and I believe they're going to start three freshmen tonight. And again, this is one of the things, if you're a, if you're a Raider fan, may look familiar. About six years ago, Coach Dave McCullough started four or five freshmen they got better as freshmen, better as sophomores, and really kind of matured into a good junior and senior team. So it looks like Coach Ellsworth is going to try to create a similar blueprint. Yeah, Johnny Howard, who was on the right side of your screen there, averaging about six and a half points per game, just a freshman, shooting 42% from the field. So an already young starting lineup, Jim, gets even thinner for Shenandoah. But, of course, the thing that you have to keep in mind when you're playing in a rivalry game, and that rivalry game is the home team that is being sliced down due to injuries. You truly never know what could happen, though. Yeah, you know, the one thing about Shenandoah is I'll say this. They have several players that average seven or eight points a game. So they are going to be a little bit difficult to defend. You can't really key on that one kid who averages 15 or 20 or whatever. you got to guard all five of them or, you know, all six of them, the, the first guy off the bench. Uh, we'll see uh, how Coach uh, Spalding chooses to attack it defensively. Of course, for Eastern Hancock, you got the two Spalding twins who do the majority of their scoring. As you said, Silas and Jacob Spalding. Jacob's at 17 points a game. Silas is at 14 and a half points per game. That's, of course, nothing new. And I think the wild thing, not only are they twins, their shooting numbers and perspectives looks nearly identical. Very similar players, and the only difference between height between them is an inch. It's Eastern Hancock controlling out of the gate. We're glad to have you with us on Nine Star TV. Eastern Hancock in the all blue. Shenandoah in the white in that gold trim. This is Edric Miller missing a baseline two. He got his own rebound and it swung back across for Eastern Hancock for a fresh shot, uh, for a fresh set of possession. Silas Spalding got the pass from his brother Jacob. Now hands off to Jacob one more time. This is a three taken by Grant Gray. Missed again and Shenandoah with a couple stops, Jim, to open things up. Well, one of the things about this Eastern squad is they do hit the offensive boards really hard. Miller, Gray, Rubel all have a bunch of offensive rebounds, so they're going to get a lot of second-chance buckets. We mentioned the injuries for Shenandoah. This is their leading scorer, Carson Brookbank. About seven and a half points per game. Brookbank, he's going to be relied on even more now due to the departure of Howard with injury. And it's Shenandoah coming out with some early press. They have the game's first lead at 2-zip. Just underway in this one from Shenandoah. You know, one of the things Eastern does not turn the basketball over a lot. They only have six turnovers per game on average this year. So it looks like Shenandoah is going to try to add the pressure and see if they can't force some more turnovers. Another three taken by Gray. 0 for 2 to start the afternoon from deep for the Royals. 90 seconds gone by in this one. The Raiders have the game's only point. Heavily pressured was Hellman, one of the three freshmen in that starting lineup for Shenandoah. Jarrett Hellman, six-foot freshman. Of course, there's Zane Mitchell. And we mentioned Howard is out, but Jim, one guy that you may see seeing time, 21 in white. He's not on the court yet, but Braden Cash may be relied upon, called up from the JV squad. That's Brookbank missing. Eastern Hancock with the stop. Still 2-0 Shenandoah. Really good defensively there by uh, Eastern Hancock. A little zone defense. 
Silas Spalding, no good on a three. Offensive rebound, Kanan Rubel, six foot four, only a sophomore. Rubel, who's shooting 50% plus from the field on the season. He's a dangerous man in the post. Well, again, an offensive rebound, you're going to see a lot of second check. Chance buckets, it looks like perhaps the first turnover. Jacob Spalding the other way, and one. He crashed into the Raiders defender underneath the basket and drew the foul. Thomason picks up the guilty plea, and Jacob Spalding will go to the free throw line. And you see the replay there. Nice finish at the rim. Got to finish through contact. Nice job. Of course, senior kid probably does that a lot. I'm sure plays a lot of travel ball, gets a lot of opportunities. Just got to wonder how much the Spalding twins learn from each other. Playing all these years together, now seniors. Tell you what, you get to the month of March, that is certainly a tough out. Two guards that know each other so well. Quick five-point swing for Eastern Hancock. They have the lead, and they heavily press almost another steal. Brookbank has this. Carson Brookbank, the bounce pass into Thomason, who lays it in. Good crowd and environment here at Shenandoah. Again, this is not going to be an easy game for Eastern Hancock, although the Raiders are really feeling it due to injuries. One-point game. Back inside, it's Rubel. And that could be the difference, Jim. Not sure if Shenandoah has a guy that can necessarily match up with the taller Rubel down low. Yeah, and you know, defensively, too, with uh, Edric Miller out, top 23, he's so long, long arms. He just creates such a problem, and now... Coach Ellsworth's going to take a timeout and talk about it. Timeout on the floor. Shenandoah will take it. Your impressions of the first couple, Jim, 7-4. Again, defensively, I'm very impressed with Eastern Hancock. It just seems like they got more than five guys on the floor, mm. and it's because of their size, their length. Again, you've already mentioned Rubel and, and Miller, just really good. And then, you know, at the top, they're, they're playing like a 3-2 or maybe a 1-2-2. Speaking about Eastern Hancock zone, it's going to be very hard to, to, to penetrate. You're going to have to get slashers or you're going to have to get open jumpers. And really, Jim, Eastern Hancock, they have not been phased over three start from beyond the arc, and they're comfortable shooting that, but although they have not shot the ball well to open this one, they've been more than happy to feed the ball down low and pick up points that way. Well, if you've ever been around a team that has good outside shooters, and again, for all you, you know, Pacer fans, Reggie Miller, Reggie might miss his first five, six, or seven shots. Did not slow him down. Good shot there, Coach Ellsworth, in his first year as the Raider head coach. So Shenandoah out of the timeout. They trail by just three. Shenandoah again. Big 31-point W against Westdale last time out. That broke a three-game skid. Much needed, but now trying for maybe what be, would be their most impressive win of the season if they can hang in this one. Three ball is missed by Zane Mitchell. The three not usually Mitchell's game has only taken 11 of those on the campaign as Silas Spalding. He draws contact, missed the shot, but he'll go to the free throw line. Silas, compared to his twin brother Jacob, Silas averages about two points less per game, but his shooting numbers are all elevated a little bit better compared to his brother, but still very similar. They each shoot 40% plus from the field, 30% plus from three. Also good foul shooters, Silas converting at an 80% clip on freebies. Yeah, that last time defensively, Easter Hancock out of the timeout. Brendan came out with a man defense. So, again, Coach Spalding is going to give Coach Ellsworth and the Shenandoah youngsters lots of different things to look at as they give a little bit of a three-quarter full-court press here. So back to a five-point game. Shenandoah having a hard time breaking the press. Multiple passes in all kinds of directions before it ends up with A.J. Demick and now Brookbank. Everybody getting a touch for Shenandoah already on this possession. Brookbank across the baseline. Demick, one bouncer, and shooting and scoring. A.J. Demick averages over seven points a game. And again, the older players, Demick's a junior, Brookbank's a senior. They're going to have to step up with their freshman scoring not being as available as of late. 0 for 4 now on threes, by the way, Eastern Hancock. Demick the other way and lost it. It'll stick with Shenandoah. Well, one of the things that I've noticed that both teams are doing a real good job too, Brennan. Both teams full court or three quarter pressing. The best way to beat a press is to keep the basketball in the middle of the floor. It gives you a three way go. Obviously, you can go left, right, or straight ahead. And uh, both teams are being able to keep the ball in the center. So neither team's press has really been 
horribly effective yet. Demick's three no good. Bodies go crashing under the basket. It's going to be a foul on Shenandoah. Grant Gray drew it. And Eastern Hancock with the ball back. Up by three. First quarter already more than halfway done. You see Tomlinson just come flying in there out of control and picks up his second foul, so he's going to go to the bench. And again, an already thin Shenandoah bench. So we'll see what they do is checking in for the first time. Kenyon Troxel, he's a senior, 20 and white for Shenandoah. Yeah, Troxel does not play a lot, but again, this is probably his role. Come in when people get in foul trouble, they're going to want him to defend. They're going to want him to rebound and hit an open shot if he's there. He's probably not going to be their first offensive option but he's got to be able to shoot the ball if he's open. Great ball movement, Eastern Hancock, but Spalding lost it to the baseline. Shenandoah doing a pretty good job of hanging around at least in this first quarter. The question is, can they keep up the scoring? This is the new man, Troxel. Bounce pass, Brookbank. Left it short. Great with his first rebound of the ball game for Eastern Hancock. Jacob Spalding. For Gray, now Silas Spalding. Jacobs three, rattles in and out. Still no threes for Eastern Hancock. They're still resting comfortably, though. That speaks to the depth of this Royals team and what they can do, especially inside. This bounces away. Shenandoah keeps it yet again. A two and change left in the first. Yeah, even against the press there, again, to keep it in the middle, that Shenandoah did a nice job there of getting the ball right to the middle of the free throw lane giving that player again an opportunity to turn, look down, and have three three different directions where he can go with the basketball. Zane Mitchell, the freshman. All of them experiencing their first rivalry game with Eastern Hancock. Couple schools separated by 17 miles. Troxel for Brookbank, caught the glass. Just a little too strong, Eastern Hancock, another big blower. Luke Morris in the game for the first time, 32 in blue. Morris plays a key role off the bench. How about a guy that shoots 60% as one of their six men? That's not too shabby. Not at all. You know, get that guy to come in off the bench when the other team's a little tired and give you that type of offensive production. Certainly a, a positive thing for you if you can get it. Hendrick Miller, line drive pass. It winds up with Silas trying to step back against Troxel. Good defense by Troxel. But now this is Fenn at the baseline. Tough shot scoring is Grant Gray, his first points of the ball game. So some good D by Shenandoah still winds up with Eastern Hancock points. So watch it as Shenandoah brings it up again. Get it to the middle, reverse it, get it across the 10 second line, get it down. Troxel with that goggle look for Demick, his three no good, wide right. And the Royals now trying for back-to-back -back possessions, being able to put one in. This is Morris. Shenandoah's getting the stops. It's just a matter of scoring, Jeff. There's no doubt about it. And again, Easter Hancock's a little cold, getting ball in the middle of the floor, gives you lots of options. Brookbank steps into a three, in and out. And the Royals the other way, two on two. Jacob Spalding got hammered on his way to the glass. He earns that foul, and he'll go to the line a couple times. We'll see who they call this on, Brennan. We get the replay here to our right. We're going to call it on Brookbank right there. Yeah, again, just kind of. Brookbank ran into Spalding. It's a good foul. Spalding had a three-point play earlier that was converted. Misses this shot. Shenandoah goes back to their bench. Aiden Coffey, I beg your pardon, that's Landon Reddick, 33 in white. He's a junior. Reddick does not play usual consistent minutes, but again, multiple players for the Raiders must step up in the next period of time due to an injury. Yeah, and you know, the, that's the biggest thing. You know, it's, you don't have to have one guy come in and play totally above his head. Just have five guys play just a little bit better. Yeah. Great defense along the corner by Morris. You can hear, you can hear Aaron Spalding barking those defensive orders from the sideline. Coach Spalding's tie is already undone, so that's not, he's I, into it early. I've said this every year. I don't even know why he brings a tie. <laughs> yeah, I'll just leave that. He already bus. brought up the dress shirt and <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah, very animated. One of those mini coaches you see that will get up and move around and it's an over the back. 
A.J. Demick was heavily pressured by a couple of Royals and another Shenandoah turnover. So just like that, towards the back end of this first quarter, under 30 seconds to go, the Royals possibly can go up either 8 or 9 to close out the game's first eight minutes. And it looks like Coach Balding more than happy to salt away the last 20 seconds and just get that last second shot. Probably going to get moving at about 8 or 9 seconds. That way if you miss the shot, maybe you get the rebound, you get a putback. There they go with eight inside. What a pass to Miller in the corner, and Miller nails it down on a big three. And they will go up nine points to close the first quarter, Jim. Big shot by Miller. He was by himself in the corner after that great pass. Well, really good ball movement. You know, kick it inside, and if it's not there, kick it back out. That's the way the game has kind of evolved at every level here lately. Eastern Hancock with the game's first big blow. We go to the second, 15-6 Royals on Nine Star TV. really heavily involved in the community, so there are multiple different volunteer opportunities that we can go and do. Volunteer time, team, um, share their time and talents oh, yeah? with organizations that need uh, um, not only monetary assistance, but just people's time to that? help those organizations grow and thrive. Nine Star is a different kind of company, and the difference is you. A major three hit by Edric Miller. He's hit those consistently this year, 33% from deep as a power forward for a big guy, Edric Miller. It was a great play, Jim, drawn up by Aaron Spaulding to close the first quarter. You called it. Start with about eight seconds to go. They got a huge pass to the corner, and there was no Raider there to defend. Well, and when you hit the shot, you don't have to worry about the rebound put back. And, of course, they normally will, will then got to go through the cords in about three seconds, not giving the other team much time to advance the ball up the floor. So... Exactly the way, like you said, you design it. And uh, if it had missed, you got a guy underneath there for maybe a putback. And Eastern Hancock does that really well on the offensive boards. Shenandoah in the all-white, though, the first possession of the second quarter, down nine after the first eight minutes. And some ferocious defense by Eastern Hancock to begin this second quarter. They forced an early turnover. Foul called on the floor as Spalding on his way in was grabbed on the wrist by, I believe, Landon Reddick. Reddick will go to the bench. And Hagen Tomlinson back into the game, 30 in white. He is their biggest player on the floor, at least right now. Miller scoots it to the corner for a Silas Spalding three miss. That three ball, by the way, by Miller, their first three of the game when it went down. They did have a three-point play, though, old-fashioned way by Jacob Spalding earlier in the quarter. So Shenandoah Jim looking for an answer, and... We said it a couple times in that first quarter. They were getting necessary stops, just were unable to sink it on the other end of the floor. Well, and that's the key to it, too. you got to be able to convert once you have it. And uh, if anything, right now, Shannon doing a little bit of foul trouble. Five fouls to Eastern Hancock's one. And we still got seven and a half minutes to play in the, in the second quarter. Yeah, that's one thing for Shannon Doan. They do have a threat from outside, but not necessarily a game wrecker down low. They do try and get it back to Troxel here. Troxel gives it to Zane Mitchell, missed the shot. The basketball rattles around a couple times and winds up back in a royal hand. Luke Morse with his second rebound of the ball game. A nine point game, it stays. Another whistle coming, and those fouls, Jim, are piling up for Shenandoah continuously, it seems. Yeah, and again, we had talked about it. You had talked about number 21, uh, Braden Cash, in the ball game, and he's in there to get his first foul. So. Six now, so Shannon, and you know, Shenandoah does not want to let Eastern get into a free throw situation. Eastern shoots about 76% mm -hmm. from the uh, the line. What passing to the corner? It's a three for Silas Spalding. That was not only efficient, that was surgical. Yeah, and Coach Ellsworth may want to think, normally you don't want to, like to use a lot of your timeouts early, but in this situation with uh, the amount of experience that he's giving up, And I believe that was a I didn't, Yeah, I didn't call. catch yeah. it, Jim. Well, he caught the ball. Looked like he maybe shuffled his feet just a little bit. But yet another turnover. And, and again, this one's going to get out of hand from Coach Ellsworth and his squad. So go ahead and use them. I mean, this is a good time to just reteach everything. Talk about, hey, guys, this is what we talked about in practice. You know, let's go back and do it. Here is some size that comes in for Shenandoah. Ten and white. Canning Case, a six-foot-five sophomore. 
And Canning Case just beside him taking the charge there is going to be Jarrett Hellman. Charge taken, offensive foul, Eastern Hancock. And again, look at the uh, three-corner court press immediately. Right there at that free throw line extended. The Raiders, though, have dug themselves a significant hole. They must score often the rest of the way here in the first half, but another Raider turnover. Braden Cash could not link up with Canning Case on the line drive pass. Yeah, I have Shenandoah with an average of 16 turnovers a game, which honestly is, is just too many. I mean, you, you'd like to be around in the 8 to, to 10 range at the most. Uh, Eastern, like I said, only gets about 6. The big bouncer to the baseline, no good on the shot coming from Caden Rubel. The Raiders are playing good defense. There is no doubt about that. The turnovers are just hammering them. Good anticipation that time by Caden Rubel of just seeing the pass and breaking on it. Unfortunately, was not able to corral the ball before it went out of bounds. But again, I love the anticipation defensively. It was almost like he saw that. The passer telegraphed it. He started moving. Just about had an easy layup. 18-6 ball game here in the second quarter. Shenandoah has yet to score here in the first couple minutes of the second. Whistle coming, and that's a rare foul going on Eastern Hancock, Jim. Yeah, you know, one of the things that you can almost see the inexperience here as you look at some of these Raider players getting the basketball, and they're almost panicking that the second they get it. Now, credit the pressure by Eastern Hancock, but, you know, the difference is when Eastern's kids get trapped or double teamed, I mean, they just very calmly dribble their way out of it. Seems like a little bit more of a, you see, again, just a panic situation right there. Another turnover. This time, Edric Miller forces it away, and he scores on the other side. 23, doing it all himself. Edric Miller looks like a strong player. Lengthy, strong. I like Miller. I like him a lot. And a timeout taken by Shenandoah. Eastern Hancock has opened this thing up to 20-6. to six. Yeah, Jim, not only do the Royals have the depth on the bench of guys that can score in a six-man role, but it almost seems like their starting lineup is seriously diverse. You have guys that can shoot. You have guys that can play in the post. When it comes to getting to the month of March and you have all that, you're going to be a pretty darn good basketball team. Yeah, I really like this ball club. For the 2A level, Eastern Hancock, we took a good long look at Coach Aaron Spalding and his record there at Eastern 291 and 246. And this is the Mid-Eastern mid Conference. Uh, but, uh, you know, Eastern with a tough loss uh, to Wapahani there at the top 4-0. It's a two-point ball game. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, again, I like this team come tournament time. They do schedule up. Uh, um, Eastern played at New Palestine early in the year. New Palestine's 13-0, ranked like 8th in 4A. Mm. We Coach, saw them a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. So Coach Spalding is smart enough to know, hey, listen, I'm going to challenge these kids because once we get in the tournament, we start playing the teams from Fort Wayne, the teams mm. from Indianapolis. You know, I want my kids to be able to see that, and he's doing that by, by toughening his schedule. You mentioned it, Eastern Hancock, a double overtime thriller in a game that ended in sad fashion for them, losing in double OT to Tinley on December the 28th. That was a tournament. They had to play later that night. It could be very easy to pack that in. They beat Heritage. So the mental fortitude of this Eastern Hancock team was shown there as a couple bodies collide. Zane Mitchell from Shenandoah looked like he took the worst of it. And as you get a look here. That looked to me like 43. Ruble. I haven't put, there it is. I was going to say, they haven't put it on the board yet, but there it goes. I mean, that's almost a hockey check. Yeah. Always physical between these two. Another foul on Eastern Hancock. There's a couple quickies. Well, we talked about earlier how uh, Shenandoah may be getting into a little foul trouble at the time. Eastern only had one foul. Now mm. it's pretty much even. Shenandoah with 16 fouls and uh, Eastern with five. A.J. Demick, 22 and white. He had the most recent Shenandoah bucket that was in the first quarter. Jacob Spalding, coast to coast, lays it in. Really nice job there again. Body control, athleticism, finishing through contact. This press is just sinking Shenandoah. They do get it to the corner, though. The double team, though, collides along with Thomason. Nice move, Mitchell, and Mitchell flushes it home. 
Young freshman there, really nice move, spin move. You know, he had a plan. When he caught the basketball, he knew exactly what he was going to do. He knew he was open. Like you said, they had a double team over here. Somebody's open. It was Mitchell. Mitchell catches the basketball with a plan, on a mission, and goes and scores. Yeah, that's spin move finish. That's not your ordinary freshman take. No, I was 24 years old before I was ever really to be able to do it good. <laughs> I still can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> now Eastern Hancock slowing it down. With under four to go, Jacob Spalding misses the three, rebound, and a turnover. Cannon Case tried to push the pace, and it's going to result in a foul on the other end. Good idea by Case, the young sophomore, but the man he tried to get it to, I believe, was Mitchell, who was just not looking in that direction. Good job by Rubel there, just kind of forcing this contact. Does the shot fake right here. You're going to see the jump right there and gets clearly smacked. Caden Rubel, 58% from the foul line. That's a nice stroke. Yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, for 58%, that one there, you can tell he's been working on it, and I guarantee you, Coach Spalding and his staff have told him, listen, you can't shoot 58% if we're going to win in the, in the tournament. You've got to get that in the mid-60s. Otherwise, it's going to become that shack, or, uh, hack a shack. Yeah. And a two-of-two two trip there while Eastern Hancock makes a change. Grant Gray back in for Ruble. Man, it took six, seven passes for Shenandoah just to break the press. That's how suffocating it has been from Eastern Hancock. Carson Brookbank back into the game. He was dealing with some foul trouble. Demick pulls up, and it's a baseline J. A.J. Demick, he's looked like a nice player, hitting a couple medium-length shots in this one. That big junior there is going to have to step up a little bit. Wide open, though, Spalding. Gray reaches over the back. I think that's what Shenandoah wanted. They let it go. Winds back up with Silas to the corner. Yeah, one of the things, you know, fans for years have yelled, you know, that's you can go over the back as long as you don't make contact. Yep. And I don't think that he did. Nope. I think those long arms, he was able to reach up, tip the ball back to himself. That's where the size difference really comes into play. Athletic pass, Spalding, tipped by Demick. More good defense by Shenandoah. That is far from been the problem for the Raiders. But at some point, they're going to get tired, and Miller makes him pay. Long three. Miller sinks down his second triple of the game. Yeah, he's that third guy as this, as this Royal team gets deeper and deeper in the playoffs. You're, you're just not going to be able to focus on the Spalding kids all the whole time. Demick drew the foul. Attempting to take the charge was Luke Morris. But A.J. Demick is going to get some free throws where he has been good in limited fashion this year, going 8 of 14 from the charity strike. Yeah, you see it there, 32, just honestly. I mean, he just got that. He, he brought that foul point himself. There was very slight contact on his shoulder. And then, honestly, he kind of flopped. Well, if Shenandoah has... The aspiration is to get back in this game. They're going to need points in this fashion with the clock stopped. No doubt about it. That's a big deal. I mean, either that or threes. you got to, you got to score when the clock is stopped, or you got to hit threes. Demick sinks a pair. And this is as close as it's been in a while, 15. Eastern Hancock more than happy to be patient. And they are so meticulous with the basketball. Nearly everybody gets a touch. Grant Gray looking for his first three of the game. Misses again. Brookbank pulls down the rebound. Shenandoah just a pass too hot in the direction of Thomason. Unfortunately, from a Raider perspective, they've had two, three, four occasions like that today. Got him for nine turnovers, uh, Brendan. And again, I'm normally off by one or so, you know, per half. And just way too many. You're not going to win a lot of basketball games. And Coach Ellsworth knows this. Uh, you know, he, he knows he's playing young kids. They're going to make mistakes. Gray tries another. That's short. Offensive rebound, Eastern Hancock. Spalding was swatted until a foul was called on Tomlinson. Yeah, we mentioned earlier how good Miller, Gray, and Rubel are on the offensive boards. There you see a nice job of Silas Spalding getting the ball, going in, creating the contact, could not finish. But uh, he goes to the line where he does shoot about 76%. So. 
again, it is kind of funny to look at the statistics for both Spalding brothers. They, not only are they identical twins, they're, <laughs> they are identical stats almost. Yeah, you know, and, and obviously the, the Spalding kids had learned it a long time ago. If you're a driver and a slasher, you know, you can pick up six to eight points a night just at the free throw yeah. line, you know, if you can hit your free throws. So go up there, and before you know it, if you get eight or ten from the line, you get mm -hmm. another six or eight from the field, you know, you're pushing the 20 mark. The full court press by Eastern Hancock remains. All these zigzagging passes by Shenandoah. They do get it forward. The Royals with it again with 90 seconds to play in the half. Spalding hits another three. This time it's Silas. The second triple of the ball game so far. 20-point game here in half number one. Demick was bumped by Gray on his way to the cage. Yeah, Gray didn't like the call because there wasn't a tremendous amount of contact there, but there was just enough. You know, the, the term is player displacement. All right, if there's enough contact that the player, we're going to see it on the replay here, has to go around him, which he does there, just he, you move the player. You displace the player. They're going to blow the whistle. Demick had a two-for-two two trip a moment ago. His solid free throw shooting continues here. And I don't know if you see it at midcourt, but one of the officials is kind of explaining that uh, exact same thing to Silas Spalding. He, he kind of pushed his hips like, you know, you can't, you can't move the kid, right? Good job by the senior captain going over, getting an explanation. Demick misses that one. Three of four on the night, though, here in the half. Demick has had a strong half. Three free throws, two buckets. The leading score for the Raiders here tonight. Jacob Spalding's three rattles in and out. The rebound caught by Canning Case, Brookbank. We'll push the ball forward for Shenandoah. Braden Cash exchanges to the corner. The three coming, missed again by Demick. Spalding on his way to the lane. Had it bumped away. Last touch to Raider. I believe that was Braden Cash. Nice job of getting his hands in there. But once again, Spalding slashing, driving, trying to get to the rim. You're going to see it here. He reaches in and slaps it away right there. Got a foul on the floor here, but with live action but again he's going to the rim stop me or I'll you know or I'll lay it in and if, if you do foul me I'll go to the line and hit too so it's kind of pick your poison your referees tonight by the way Kyle Hobbs Justin Bates and John Menenhall Jacob Spalding back at the free throw line where he's had an efficient night Been hanging on this 20-point swing here for quite a few minutes. Eastern Hancock has. Six of seven at the line for Spalding so far tonight. I think that's seven, seven of eight. Now 20-plus. I mean, you don't know, Jim, if that type of press can work come tournament time, come those massive playoff games but if you can run that to a T and Shenandoah with some crisp passing Cash misses the three just in front of us the rebound is scooped up by Luke Morris if that press can work come tournament time not only can you score you can play that type of suffocating defense I, that, that's a tough out Jim for any ball club yeah and I know some fans may say you know why are you still full, full court pressing up 20 honestly they're practicing their game they're practicing for sectional. They're not necessarily, they want to win this game too, don't get me wrong. But you're right, that's why they're practicing this, because of the big game coming up. Miller couldn't make a buzzer beater three in this quarter. Nonetheless, Eastern Hancock resting comfortably. Up 21 after 16 minutes of play. We'll come back after halftime next from Shenandoah on Nine Star TV. NYSTAR is very focused on customer and member care, focused on making sure that however we communicate with the, with the member and customer is how they want to communicate. You know, sometimes we're the one person that we speak to in a day, and we want that conversation to be happy as it. As a nonprofit co-op, we're focused on providing the best service we can for our members. NYSTAR is a different company, and the difference is you. 
steak. Excited. They have good mashed potatoes. Me too. Wait, what's your mom say?
unmute you and whatever. Um, Welcome back to Shenandoah, where Eastern Hancock has opened up a 21-point lead on the Raiders. Brendan King with Jim Leisure. Jim, of course, I think the scoring perspective by Eastern Hancock is going to be what people come away from that first half with most. But for me, and maybe you too will get your thoughts, the offensive rebounding, not only by committee in the post, but as well the guard stepping up to rebound was quite impressive. They do a really good job of just literally crashing the boards. I mean, that's the old phrase, and that's the term. And uh, Silas Balding does just that. Ball goes to the rim. He doesn't stand around like a lot of guards. He goes to the rim and finds the basketball. If he doesn't come down with it, he tries to tip it to a teammate who then gets the rebound and the easy putback. So uh, right now, just again, you can start to see the experience of Eastern Hancock kind of separating itself from the inexperience of Shenandoah. Shenandoah, from an offensive perspective, A.J. Demick has been a solid ball player tonight. He's got seven points, has hit three free throws, a couple of buckets on the baseline. So, really, Jim, when you score 13 points and a half, hard to come away with positives, but Shenandoah, you talked about to open the broadcast. They have been in this position before where they have started freshmen, have had to do that, and look what happened in the past for Shenandoah when they had to build sort of from the bottom playing a lot of freshmen. Yeah, you know, they had an opportunity, unfortunately, one of the years was the COVID year that the tournament got canceled. They were going to be very, very good that year. They were going to be a very difficult out. They won the sectional, and that's, of course, when the tournament was canceled. Uh, it was right after the sectional level. But, uh, you know, uh, Carson Brookbank has five rebounds for them. So there, there's some bright spots on this uh, Shenandoah basketball team as well. Let's see if they can build on it in the second half here. Eastern Hancock with the ball out of the half. And immediately, we get a whistle as A.J. Demick touched the ball on the baseline. I think they're going to call a foul on uh, 24. I just mentioned Brookbank. And you're going to see it right here underneath you as he pushes right there. Again, we talk about player displacement. Contact that leads to the player moving. Silas Spalding with the basketball for Eastern Hancock. He had an efficient first half, as did Caden Rubel in the post, taking that one up from outside. But it's going to be a foul on Eastern Hancock. The Raiders will now get their first possession of the third quarter. Well, that foul is on Grant Gray for the exact same thing. I mean, again, we talked earlier, it is, it's legal to go over the back. You're going to see it. He tries to go over the back, but he makes contact, moves the player, easy call. I believe it was Gray that got away with the first one because yeah. he didn't make contact. Correct. So we've seen both wavelengths for Grant Gray. And a lot of coaches will tell their kids, look, just don't do it. You know, just don't do it. And Coach Ellsworth is going to call timeout, see something in that press that he feels like he can exploit. Well, you know, it's interesting, Jim. We're now seeing that press facing us yeah. here in the second half. We were watching it go away from us in the first. Pretty, I mean, we've mentioned how suffocated it is and yeah. how tough of defense it is, but it is quite an experience watching that press from this angle now and watching how they all move in motion together. Yeah, that's an excellent point, you know, Brendan. But you're exactly right. It does seem a little bit more daunting this way. Yeah. You know, watching it from this angle. Uh, it just seems, like I said earlier, like there's six of them out there. I mean, it, it brings up VCU 2011. Yeah. Havoc defense yeah, yeah. Uh, with, with how they are immediately on their guy. Well, and every now and then a coach might want to count them because there was a couple weeks ago we were doing a game in Mount Vernon, and they actually started a quarter with six guys on the floor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ended up as a technical. Uh, somebody caught it before it got too far into it. Shenandoah in the all-white. Eastern Hancock, the all-blue. Brendan King, Jim Leisure, a minute gone by here in the third quarter. Demick was the hot man in the first half. He had that swatted away. Brookbank, second opportunity. He missed that one, too. But this will stick with Shenandoah, knocked out of play. 
Yeah, it was Jacob Spalding that got the block. That's who I'm going to credit it that to. That was ferocious. And uh, Miller gets the ball there. And Demick gave it up to Hellman. Now Brookbank. He's the lone senior on the floor. A.J. Demick trying to work around Gray. Gray is the taller man. Demick, though, trying to tie him up. This will be lost into the Shenandoah bench. Eastern Hancock takes it back. Jim, I know you were say, telling me a story off air about the history of this gym here at Shenandoah High School. And great crowd tonight to open things. But I know that you have seen this gym kind of rise through the times. And you have seen even have some memories playing here. Yeah, you know, it was actually 40 years ago. It would have been 1983. And, you didn't uh, have to say 40. Well, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and uh, there used to be a gym on the other side. I mean, I'm sorry, a stage on the other side. It's now an open area. And that's where the band would play. And another foul on the floor there. But uh, 1983 was two years after Shenandoah, who only had about maybe 180 kids in the whole building. And that was single class basketball. They won the regional. I'm sorry, sectional beat Richmond, as you're going to see on the replay here, the foul. So they beat you know the big, mighty Richmond Red Devils in the sectional. They win the regional. They upset a very talented Indianapolis Howl team at the Hinkle Semi-State which uh, I know you've had a lot of, uh, called a lot of ball games in venerable Hinkle Fieldhouse, uh, but that was back when Hinkle used to host the sectional, regional, and semi-state, hmm. and uh, got beat in the morning game of the state champions, the finals, the final four, by Vincennes Lincoln, who ended up winning the state that night. I think we're going to have to talk to Barry Collier and Mike Freeman, try and bring that back. I mean, that was, that sounds like an outstanding time. Semi-state at Hinkle. Once again, the press coming from Eastern Hancock. There is a look on your screen. Shenandoah, 1981. Silas Spalding pulls up and hits. You know, one of the mistakes that uh, this young Raider basketball team it consistently does, they get the ball just over the timeline, and they pick it up. They pick up their dribble, and they just they basically trap themselves. you got to keep your dribble or keep moving, but you can't get across the timeline and pick it up. You're just asking to be trapped. Zane Mitchell, big bouncer to the corner. Now Thomason unable to hit. Offensive rebound, Shenandoah. A.J. Demick, that should be a two, missed it anyway. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons they don't do the Hinkle re sectional and regional, so much like, seriously, was the success of the Butler team. Yeah. Uh, when they were in the old Horizon League, uh, you know, you never knew whether you were going to host games in that tournament or not. It was dependent upon your record. Three more by Kanan Rubel. The big man is able to hit that. He's got seven triples on the year. And, you know, when, when Butler maybe wasn't quite so good, it wasn't a big deal. You didn't have right. to worry about hosting games. But uh, when they started winning the Horizon on a pretty uh, regular basis, and when there was another conference they were in before. the 8-10. Uh, yeah, yeah, Atlantic 10. Uh, so it became an issue where they had to keep the building open in yeah. case they got to host a conference game. Mm -hmm. Third turnover of the half for Shenandoah. Now they had 10 in the first half, so again, that can explain some of the uh, point differential here as well. We are getting towards running clock area, which is at 35, 40 to 13 here. Hendrick Miller looks like a fascinating ball player, and he's still relatively young. The passing by Eastern Hancock continues to be supremely crisp as the night goes on. Well, and again, we say this all the time as coaches, every day, whether it's practice or a game, you have an opportunity to get better or get worse. Eastern Hancock's just trying to get better. They're yeah. working on every facet of their game. Tomlinson fake the shot, draws the foul, puts away the bucket. You know, that was actually pretty good defense here by Eastern Hancock. Nice job of collapsing down, double teaming the, uh, the ball right on the block. Now, again, as it was, Tomlinson does a nice job of uh, making them pay with the foul. And we'll see if he can get the, uh, as you said earlier, the old-fashioned three-point play. You're going to see it right here. Gets him up in the air. Nice job working through contact. 58% from the line for big number 30. That goes down. Jacob Spalding will carry to the paint. Now shuffle away. The big man, Rubel, just in front of us. Everybody getting a touch for the Royals here. Spalding will take the shot, and Jacob nails a three. You know, it touches the key word there, Brendan, because there were two touch passes in that sequence there yeah. where the play, one kid didn't even come down with it. He went up, slapped it in the air to a teammate who was open, who moved it immediately to another teammate. Strong ball club in blue. 
There is no doubt about that. Yeah, don't let the record fool you. They got five losses, but again, I know of at least two or three of them were really, really good opponents. Yeah, you know, their last six, we mentioned that double overtime loss to Tinley and then got to win the same night against Heritage. Two more for Shenandoah. That time it's Landon Reddick, his first points. Reddick, a 5'11 junior. So they lost to New Palestine, who's undefeated. Yep. They lost to uh, Wapahani, who's only lost uh, one ball game. Undefeated in conference. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they lost to a great Tenley ball club. That's three of the five. Silas right in the face of Demick pulled up, missed it. Rebound back to Tomlinson. Yeah, both of these teams coming off wins. Another bucket for Shenandoah. A.J. Demick has really steered the offensive unit for Shenandoah tonight. Eastern Hancock over Monroe Central last time. And we mentioned the Shenandoah win against Westell. Timeout on the floor. Offensively for Shenandoah, maybe this gym has been their best few moments of the game. Definitely the best two-minute stretch offensively so far for the Raiders. Yeah, it really has been. And again, they got to see, see if they can build on that. But let's talk a little bit about Eastern Hancock. Four of their losses, undefeated New Palestine. 4A Bloomington South, they're pretty good, right? <laughs> <laughs> Always very good. That was in the first game of that tournament you talked about. And then they lost in double overtime to Tenley. They lost to a Wapahani team by one point, who again has only lost one ball, ball game. And they lost to Greenfield Central, uh, who has also only lost one game on the season. And there's a look at our next broadcast. You and Kurt. Yeah. That's a fun booth. Yeah, me and Kurt Darling. I'll have some Paul's mint the lift for him. Last time Kurt and I worked a game. <laughs> Uh, he sounded like Marge shot the whole time. Yeah, is he over? I, mean, I he was so. dealing with it for Boy, a while. If he's I, not, he needs to see a doctor. One thing I always respect, you you have the cough drops always on the broadcast table, which are always appreciated. Yeah, people think I'm sick all the time. and, and although you're, you're just prepared more well, than anything. I was going to say, I probably should be seeing a team of physicians. However, I, I do it because it clears my voice a little bit. <laughs> Out of the timeout. I'm Brendan, that's Jim. Thanks for being with us tonight on Nine Star TV. Third quarter action here from Shenandoah. The Raiders, offensively, again, this has been one of their better two, three-minute stretches of the game. Maybe too little too late, though. Eastern Hancock trying to get things back clicking. Miller has hit a buzzer beater today. That's over the stretching hand of Spalding. So Shenandoah, Jim, uh, again, it, it is a 45-21 game. Nonetheless, they... This is the most confidence easy, easily we have seen Shenandoah so far tonight. Yeah, and after that turnover, Coach Ellsworth, we saw him on the sidelines. He was really excited. You know what? He's like, guys, you know what? Daggone it, we're getting better, right? I mean, we still got a long way to go, but we're getting better. Mm -hmm. Young team starting three freshmen. Troxel, though, is a senior playing off the bench. He traveled with it just before he hit the paint. Yeah, got himself in a bad situation. I like the idea. Unfortunately, again, because of this really good rotating Royal defense, you know, he thought he had a, a, a clear, you're going to see it here, thought he had a clear shot at the bucket. All of a sudden, a sea of blue shirts, he had nowhere to go. Defense underneath, Rubel missing. Coy Price, four in white, is playing his first minutes of the game. Price, a 5'10 junior, averaging just over a point per contest, but... It was Price's defense, Jim, inside, four and white, that Rubel struggled with. Yeah, and again, I, I think that's one place, and again, this is going to be the old man coming out of me. He's got to use the backboard there. You know, you're right in front of the basket, right under the basket. It's really tough to just lay it gingerly over the rim when you're being defended. Mm. So just use the glass. Go up with some power. If you get fouled, you get fouled. But if you don't, you can smack it off the glass, and it'll go right in for you. That's probably a lesson, Jim, I would think, and... This is just me thinking on the fly that Rubel is a sophomore. Those are probably things he can get away with during grade school ball and eighth grade ball, but maybe not at the varsity level. There's no doubt about it. Silas Spalding the other way. Moves in two on two. Spalding, a nice little move. Missed the shot. Rebound for Tomlinson. So Shenandoah, you know, it's interesting to look at the halftime score because the Raiders were getting stops in the first half. We're just unable to score. Here they're scoring a little bit more, and now they're starting to put together the stops now. Well, it really doesn't matter which order you do it in. You got to do both of them. You got to get stops. You got to score points. 
Price the bouncer to Tomlinson. Mayfim Troxel inside and one. Kenyon Troxel, the senior. There's something for the Shenandoah faithful to get to their feet on. Yeah, nice job of finishing with the left hand, and we're going to find out if he's left-handed. He might be, but that's a <laughs> that's a nice little baby hook here. Again, when you're on the left side of the basket, you need to shoot with your left hand. If you don't, it's easier to block. Now, again, if he shoots his free throw right-handed, I'm going to be even more impressed by that because not everybody can do that. That's really the difference between a, a varsity player, really, sometimes, and a JV kid is can you finish at the rim with either hand? Mm. We'll find out. He's dribbling with his right. He takes it right-handed, and he finishes off the three-point play. You know, the baby hook shot, that looks even better when you got the goggles on. You, well, you look full yeah. 1970s you, at that you point. You look full Kareem Abdul-Jabbar there. But, you know, again, that was impressive. A left-handed baby hook while being fouled. You know, off offhand, that, that's a pretty impressive shot. Spalding off a knee. They're going to roll the kick ball. Inbound will come just beside us. And, you know, and again, per the rule book, the National Federation rule book, the leg is part of the foot. So if you <laughs> stick your leg out there and it hits your knee uh, or your shin or whatever, it's still considered a kick. Silas Spalding will inbound to Morris. Now Miller. Andrick Miller defended by the freshman Mitchell. Jacob Spalding carries it baseline. Good Back job. out for Miller. Defensively, good rotation by Shenandoah. They're certainly better this half than they were in the first half. And to the final creeping seconds of the third quarter here. No reason for Eastern Hancock to try and rush things. And that's what they'll note. Aaron Spalding communicating to Jacob. Good look at the 2-3 zone there. You know, as you see commu communication there on the floor by Zane Mitchell, the freshman. Nice job. Communicate. Take a charge. Mitchell out there quarterbacking it. Barking from both sidelines. Down to eight in the third quarter. Gray scoots out for Jacob Spalding. Missed the three. Rebound available. And they'll run out of time. Or will they? Did they count it? He did. The, the, the referee over here did count it. Personally, I didn't think he got away from it. We'll see. Yeah, they, At least from yeah. our angle, Jim. Yeah, We had a better shot of it, I think. There was an official under the basket who just kind of didn't make any call. <laughs> Finally, the official on the wing. I saw him immediately signal bucket. We will let you know what the decision ends up being. For now, we're done with three from Shenandoah. We're back next. My name is Patty Cox, and I'd like to talk to you about a kind of convenience product. People are flushing down the toilet while they're in our system and causing expensive repair bills. They might flush down, but they sure don't flush out. Make sure you track it. Don't they did count. I just didn't see who hit it. He counted it. Hey, hey, totally pay for that in. And remember, no wipes for those pies. This important message was brought to you by Nine Star Cameras. No and we're back for our fourth quarter action. Shenandoah and Eastern Hancock. Jim, we were talking about it before the break. They do count the buzzer beater, even though maybe from our angle it looked like the shot was not off in time. The referee's discretion, that was John Mendenhall, by the way. On the right side of the court here, as you said, he immediately noted that it was a good shot. Yeah, he did not hesitate. Again, there was an official under the bucket here. Probably had a little bit of a better look, maybe a closer look. He kind of hesitated. And uh, that minute hall just said, you know what? I, I got to be at work Monday. It's good. We're going to see who gets credited with the bucket. Uh, uh, Luke Morris. And the red light's on. Let's see. Go back. Is it in his hand? It's tough. Yeah, it's really tough. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's yeah, and it doesn't dead matter. second. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but. You know, if that's a late game call where it's a, you know, five, six point game, that we, of course there's not the benefit of review here in high school ball. Right, right. Troxel had a three point play in that third quarter, tried for his fourth and fifth points there. Jacob Spalding lets one go from deep. It was ironed away. Thomas with his fifth rebound of the night. He's hot club. Troxel, big cut and a score. Kenyon Troxel's got five. Good give and go there. Get the ball inside to the to basically the, the middle post. 
Cut to the basket. Nice job. Troxel's red hot. You know, Jim, when he came into the ball game as the sixth man, you noted what he had to do. You mentioned play good defense and then let offense come around. That's exactly what he's done. He's back to the cage here and just missed possibly another three-point play. He'll go to the line. Well, and again, Brendan, I say this practically every week, but you're going to see on the replay here as he finishes at the rim here, wasn't able to get it to go. But you got, when you're in the ball game, you got to prove to the coaches that they're playing the wrong guy. You ought to be playing me more. Look at all the things that I can do. And Kenyon Troxel tonight has just been a little bit of everywhere, knocking down free throw. He came into the ball game shooting 50% from the line. Uh, I got him two for two, getting ready to try to go three for three. But, you know, he's, he's showing coach, hey, listen, I can play a little bit. I can do some things on both sides of the, of the court. I need more minutes. He's got six points. He had four points in eight games coming into this one. Kenyon Troxel has been the story for Shenandoah. And Jim, there's still about a month and change left in this season. Gray misses the three. It winds back up with Silas in the opposite corner. You could very well as Gray misses again. Got his own put back one more time at the baseline. And he'll stay with Eastern Hancock. You could be seeing Kenyon Troxel playing a lot more minutes over the final month and a half of the regular season from this performance alone. No doubt about it. I, again, I, I coached a lot of ball clubs, different sports, and you would find players as the season progressed. Tomlinson came in. I believe he caught Luke Morris with an elbow. Morris is okay. They're going to put the foul on Tomlinson. I believe that'll be his third. Nope. His fourth. It was close. I mean, it's one of those deals. We're going to see the replay here. Great job by our camera crew, as always. You're looking underneath the basket right here. Yeah, I mean, again, he came down on him. You know, he was moving toward the, the, the offensive player and came down on him. I think it's a good call. There's some energy in the building right now here at Shenandoah. Again, it's a 20-point ball game, but the, the second half, Jim, that has been played by the Raiders, if... Shenandoah came out tonight and immediately played like this. Who knows what the score is? The coach is going to take a timeout there. Coach Ellsworth, nice job. Saw that I mean, he can count to 10 too, right? He, he realizes the count's probably about six or seven, maybe even eight. Let's go ahead and take a timeout. And here's the other thing. You talk about it briefly. These two teams, schools only about 17 miles apart. They are the same size. Uh, oftentimes, they're in the same sectional in many sports, whether it's, it's girls' sports. Or, or, or boys sports. Uh, so, you know, there's a, a healthy amount of respect, but also a healthy amount of dislike. You know, you get tired of seeing the yeah. same people every year, <laughs> and eventually you just get to the point where, you know what, I don't care if we win any games, but I want to win that one. That is sort of what has happened in the uh, football rivalry that we know of Michigan and Ohio State. Absolutely. Where it doesn't matter how many games you win. No. No. If you beat one or the other, that, that's what you're going to that, be remembered that's your year, for. Yeah, you, you know, know, and we used to talk about it years ago when I was coach. And we would be when we would be favored. I would tell our kids, "Hey, you got to remember, guys. These guys hate you. Okay, <laughs> they absolutely. You're right. And you know what? If they beat you, they're going to put a picture of the team in the gym. I don't care if they go three and twenty-one. <laughs> they beat you know whoever, New Pal, Greenfield, Mount Vernon. That's what rivalries are. Hmm. Well, if this crowd is any indication of what this game means. You could know nothing about this rivalry and probably pick that up pretty quickly being in the gym. Yeah, you know, and again, one of the things out here, these two communities, you got basically Middletown and Charlottesville. There's no bowling alley and movie theater in either one of those towns. <laughs> so what are you going to do on a Friday or a Saturday night? You're going to mm -hmm. go down and watch the local high school team. Mm -hmm. Bouncer and Troxley got fouled again. Troxley shown the ability to go to the glass. And get fouled, and he's also hit his free throws. There's two things that have to happen in those situations. Number one, he has to get open, and he's doing that. He's been doing that a lot. Number two, somebody has to get him the basketball. Really nice job there uh, by Reddick getting him the ball. Unfortunately, was not able to finish. Six re minutes remain in regulation. Troxel misses that free throw. Just needs to take a little bit more time. I think he rushed that one a little bit. You got 10 seconds from the time you get the basketball. Get set. Shenandoah is back within 20, which, again, if you watch the first half, 
That's quite the deal for the Raiders, who Eastern Hancock really own the first 16 minutes. Shenandoah has been a lot better of a ball club here in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, we were actually talking the possibility of 35, and mm -hmm. now they've got it down to 20. Morris gets swatted. And Luke Morris will head to the free throw line. Morris plays more in the sixth man role. We mentioned he shoots 60% from the field. Also a good foul shooter, 75%. And almost rained out in. It was bricked away. And Morris splits the pair. Coy Price playing a good majority of the point guard minutes for Shenandoah here in the second half, four and white. So Price and Troxel, two guys that don't play a whole lot, Jim. They've had their number called, and they've stepped up. Tominson, right-hand touch, just couldn't wave around. Six rebound by Gray there, approaching 10. Edrick Miller had a three opportunity, did not take it. Troxel with the steal the other way. He was fouled before he got to the cage. Troxel continues to draw fouls at a high clip. You know, again, he's just uh, that, that kid, that gritty kind of blue-collar kid. You're going to see he got, got his hand in the passing lane, stays after it. Now he's got length. Now those long arms come into it, and Spalding tries to get it back, but fouls him in the process. A senior... He sinks another free throw. Crowd loves it. Got him with eight. I think you said he had eight coming into the game, correct, for the season? He had four points all season. Oh, four, okay. Yeah. Now he has doubled up himself. He did not take a three in any game prior to this one. Again, length. The active hands by Troxel over the back. This crowd is going crazy for Kenyon Troxel. You know, I used to play for a guy, Ed Freegy, my basketball coach in high school, and Coach Freegy at the end of every game and every practice had a fresh apple, and he, and he kept it in his, his refrigerator to coach's office, and whoever had the good, the best practice or the best game got the apple, and tonight Troxel's got the apple in my opinion. Jim, if you sent a live feed to somebody of this game and didn't include a score, mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody would think this is a four-point game. <laughs> yes. This is an 18-point basketball game. Yeah, and you know what? Hats off to the Raider kids because they have not quit. Good job there of you know, beating off the dribble. And with four and a half to go, Troxel gives it up to Mitchell. No matter how this thing ends, Jim, you would have to think that Coach Rick Ellsworth, that won't be part of the post-game speech of the not-give-up attitude. Not give up, and you know what? Get better. Tomlinson is going to be over and back. Unfortunately, their sixth and now 16th turnover of the ballgame, sixth of the second half as Coach Spalding wants to take a timeout. Just kind of talk about the situation. All right, guys, we're up 18. We got four and a half minutes. You know, there's going to be a point in a, in a sectional game where we may be in this situation. How are we going to handle it? We're going to handle it like this. Mm. We'll see what he does out of the timeout. Also a teaching moment of, you know, what if you're on the other side yeah. of, of this coin? You yeah. know, you're down 18 with four minutes to go. I mean, you're down to your last life. Any of those situations can and probably will come up in the tournament. Yeah, no doubt about it. And again, I, you know, you got to see and I'm going to look real quickly to see if these two teams are in the same sectional. They are not. Shenandoah is in Shenandoah is in sectional 41. Eastern is in sectional 42. So they would meet potentially in the regional. Uh, I think a strong possibility for Eastern. I'm going to be honest with you, probably not so much for Shenandoah. They're young. I don't know who all's in their sectional. Uh, but uh, you know, again, for them to win the section, I think would be a bit of an upset, but that's the goal. You know what? When you build a program, and, and we talked about this all the time as coaches, you want to be able to compete for sectional championships every year. That's mm. your goal. All right, there's going to be some years you don't have the horses, and everyone knows that. But if we can compete for sectional championships, and in that special year when you have that great group of seniors, five, six, seven of them, that's when you go for regional semi-states and state championships. Yeah. 
You got to build the culture, though. Always compete. Compete in practice. Compete in drills. Compete in the classroom. Compete everywhere. Grant Gray has been cold from three, has not hit one tonight. Everything else, though, going the way of the Royals. They're three point shooting, and there is Silas Spalding nailing one down. Their three point shooting took a while to get hot. When it did, though, they really piled things on, especially in the second quarter. And I will tell you, Eastern does try to live and die by the three. Jacob Spalding doing it all himself, exchanges with his brother. Silas looking for back to back threes, who has missed. A couple of Royals fly in for the board. Fought for, though, and eventually taken by Coy Price. Landon Reddick, he's got a bucket in the game, missed that one. Tomlinson on the reach in by Jacob Spaulding, another whistle goes. Yeah, probably a little bit of a rushed shot there again in a ball game like this, not a huge deal. 21 points, but you'd like to see the young man make a slightly better decision there. Just a really unnecessary slap there by Jacob Spaulding. Tomlinson has hit both of his free throws here tonight. Got the home roll that time. <laughs> Sometimes you need that. Yeah. Jarrett Hellman back in. He started the ball game. One of the freshmen in the starting lineup for Coach Rick Ellsworth. And Tomlinson remains perfect on freebie. We got Tomlinson with seven points in the ballgame. Creeping down towards the winning moments of this one. About three and change to go. Miller, when he has shot it, he's been solid. Offensive foul. Coy Price was shoved in the back out of the way. Shenandoah just continues, Jim, in the second half, be it. You have to put that asterisk on it. They have played smart basketball in the second half. Yeah, they have. they played smart and, and you know, as a team. And you're going to see some good officiating here. There's the push in the back. So the foul's on against number four there for Shenandoah. Uh, and that's Coy Pierce. And the official, as he went over to the, to the scores table, realized he forgot to get, who's my shooter? <laughs> and the other official looked at him and went four. <laughs> Gave him a, a you know, four fingers at four as a shooter. Thank you. Coy Price coming into this game had two free throw attempts and two free throw makes. Trying to match that on this trip to the line right now. And he does. Two really nice looking shots. Good back rotation. Nice and smooth. This game's going to end a lot closer than I think many thought at halftime. There's Miller sinking one in on a little floater from eight feet out. Nice touch. Price trying to work around the taller Miller. The star of the night, Kenyon Troxel. Everybody wants them to shoot it. <laughs> sure, Coach Ellsworth's like, all right, slow down a little bit, right? He's had a great game, but let's don't turn him into Rick Mount quite yet. Rick Mount, by the way, was a Mr. Basketball from Lebanon, Indiana, mm -hmm. 1966, played at Purdue. I passed by that massive barn yeah, driving on I-65 yeah. every time we come home from Chicago. Grant Gray, there is his first three of the game. Gray, big man that can shoot it, a six-foot-three senior. Rick Mount, I believe, was the first high school uh, player to be featured on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Hmm. That's probably a keepsake for many in this state that yep. have subscribed to that magazine for a long time. Yeah, there's a lot of those around Indiana in frames. Rick with his blonde crew cut. Speaking of blonde, thicker hair for Grant Gray, but he's got back-to-back -back threes. And he's found his stroke there. Again, he struggled a little bit early, but he certainly ended. And both of them came from the exact same spot. Down to the last minute, 45. The Royals continue to run the floor. Jacob Spaulding lays it in. Last couple possessions for either squad. Tomlinson missed the lay-in on his way there. And Kanan Rubel the other way. Rubel with 11. So some points 
happening in what is quote-unquote garbage time. <laughs> and the, the effort on each side. It, again, if you, if you set a game tape of this, of the second half to somebody that didn't know the score, everybody would guess that this is a neck-and-neck -neck ball game. Well, you know, again, uh, so it looks to me like Eastern's got about 16 in the, in the second half. And uh, Shenandoah's got 20, so Shenandoah's winning the half. Yeah. Uh, again, that just brings up the point. You know, it, if the Raiders come out, that's an and one play. Jacob Spalding to the rim, converting and bumping into Jarrett Hellman. If Shenandoah plays this kind of basketball in the first half, who knows what kind yeah. of ball game yeah, we end up it, having. It certainly wouldn't be a 30-point ball game. And again, nice job here. Again, beat the defender off the, uh, the dribble and then just create the contact. And uh, again, I would say do, doing this the old-fashioned way. You know, when I played, we didn't have that little mamby-pamby three-point line. You had to drive the lane, get punched in the face, <laughs> finish, and shoot the free throw with blood dripping onto your shirt. That, <laughs> that's how you got three points. Eastern Hancock will sub in the end of the bench. Charlie Halcom, 35 in blue. Jaden Stein, he's number 10. And Caden Willis, 13 in blue, also getting some time. Carson Brookbank started the game for Shenandoah. He's back in, as is A.J. Demick. Demick for Brookbank. As we play in the final 50 seconds, Coy Pierce, try, Price, I beg your pardon, tries a three, and he'll nail it down. Eastern Hancock with five players in double figures. That will win come the month of March. Yep. With 32 seconds, we'll see what Shenandoah decides to do here, if they just want to salt the rest away. Or if they want to run something. I imagine they'll go down and try to get a varsity rep here. You know, you're going to, it's pretty, still a pretty good varsity basketball team that Eastern's got on the floor, so let your kids get better. That's what they will do. And it's Hellman drawing a foul. Jaron Hellman, six-foot freshman. He's got a bright future in this program. And he's got a nice free throw stroke. When he has been called upon, he's been strong from the line. See that 80%. That's 9 of 11 on the campaign. 9 of 12 likely to end the night. Still for a freshman, that's quite a number. Down to the last 15. Luke Schilling has the basketball. He just came in for Eastern Hancock. So a young lineup is in there. And sending one home, Charlie Halcom, 5'10 junior. Halcom's second bucket of the season. Last second shot, and that's how this one will come to an end. It ends up being a 30-point final. Jim, still, even with the 68-38 final numbers, the effort that Shenandoah put in the second half it did make this game quite interesting. It's another nice installment of this rivalry game between the two. Well, you come into the ball game if you're Coach Ellsworth and his and his staff, you're down one of your starters, and you're just looking for certain kids to step up. I would say that happened, albeit a little bit late, but it happened nonetheless, and that's got to be a positive. Uh, you know, obviously not the uh, the result. I love to see this, the Shenandoah players going over and just kind of tapping you know, uh, hands with all the fans, all the young kids. Uh, you know, again, they're not happy. They don't want to do this, but they're doing it because it's about be building a program. Uh, you know what? Get better, get worse. I think the Raiders got a little bit better tonight. Congratulations to the Royals. They got a lot better. It was an excellent crowd tonight at Shenandoah. Thank you to our spectacular Nine Star TV crew. From my broadcast partner, Jim Leisure, I'm Brendan King. Hoping you enjoyed the broadcast. We'll talk to you again soon on Nine Star TV. So long, everybody.